Hey everybody, this is Josh from Muse Lesson here, and this is coming at you with another video. This one's going to be about violin, rosin, and kind of just rosin in general, all right? The greater world of rosin and what it is, what it's about, what it does for us, why we need it, so on and so forth. Uh, hey, real quick, if you're not a subscriber yet, if, you ha if this is your first time coming here, go ahead and hit that subscription bell or leave me a like if this video helped you. Um, and of course, got to hit the notification bell, I guess, because, you know, uh, subscriptions don't really mean a whole lot anymore on Facebook, apparently. But uh, but yeah, if, you're, if it's your first time, go ahead and do that. Let's dive right in. Okay, so what is rosin? This is going to kind of be a buy-in guide for you. It's going to help you understand how to use it properly, what it's for. Rosin is actually a compounder, kind of like a syrup, if you will. Um, it initially comes to us uh, from pine trees, and it's a byproduct of uh, like a tree sap called resin. Okay, R-E-S-I-N um, is kind of where it originates. Now, resin is acquired by tapping, kind of the same way you would uh, actual like maple syrup. You know, if you folks are from the northeast or anywhere up in the northern colder climates, uh, you may have uh, actually had experience with getting maple syrup. And there's a tapping effect or something like that, from what I'm told. And you actually put a tap into the tree, and it allows the resin, or in the case of maple syrup, the maple syrup case, raw maple syrup, uh, to drip out of the tree and into a collector, a container, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's how we first get it. From there, the resin is going to superheated um, or heated in some way, and uh, it, that allows it to get all the impurities out of it, because there's a lot of impurities in there once it comes out of the tree, right? Uh, then you take that resin, you take a purified resin, and then you you kind of have your special uh, recipe, if you will, to, to cook it, bake it, whatever you want to say, your, your special mixture as Emerald would boom, you know, do whatever, they put their special stuff in there. Um, and nobody wants to share their special recipe, uh, but to, to get the best rosin that's going to work for you on your violin, okay, and other instruments too. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so that's kind of what rosin is. That's where it comes from. Uh, the next question would be, uh, and you'll see me revert to some of my notes over here on the side. Uh, the next question would be, do I need rosin? Well, if you play a stringed instrument, yes, you do, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if you play a stringed instrument and you've got a brand new bow brand new strings, you've never put any rosin on them whatsoever, what's going to end up happening is you're going to take that bow, you're going to draw it across the string and get nothing. It's going to be such a quiet, tiny, minuscule, uh, inaudible sound that you, you'll you hear pretty much nothing coming out of your violin. It's, it's a whisper, basically, okay? And we don't want that, okay? We want to make that beautiful sound coming across our instrument, okay? Uh, so that's what rosin does. Rosin is actually a sticky compound, and it creates friction between the bow hair and the string, uh, the violin, cello, viola, upright bass, whatever you want to use it for, right? Um, and so that's really its main purpose. It actually is the catalyst that drives vibration to come out of the string and therefore produce vibration to go over the soundboard and, and so on and so forth in the, uh, in the violin and its cavity and, and creates violin that makes those beautiful tones. I'm sorry, creates vibration that makes those beautiful tones that comes out of the violin, okay? So that's why you need rosin. Trust me, you do need rosin, okay? So don't think you don't. You, you really do. And, I, and I'm not saying that to try to, to make you buy something you don't need. It is very, very important, okay? Uh, the next thing that we would talk about is uh, which type of rosin is best for me and best for my violin, okay? Well, let's talk about uh, the three main categories of rosin that you're going to get here, okay? And that is light rosin, medium rosin, and dark rosin, okay? So light rosin is kind of like a like a blonde color. It's, it's very see-through. You can see right through it. Um, it. It's very pretty. You know, it's nice. It's almost like... Uh, it's like, you know, when you see a horse hair that's kind of blonde, it's just all see-through. It's very glassy, right? Um, and it, it's good. It's good rosin. Uh, the, then you have medium rosin, which is like an amber color. Um, if you've ever seen, like, the movie Jurassic Park and they got the mosquito and that little amber globe, uh, it's that color or maybe a little bit darker. That's medium rosin. Um, and actually, that may indeed be, res resin may indeed be what that mosquito is in. Just come to think of it right now. That'd be kind of cool. I need to go back and look at that again. Uh, but at any rate, it's a medium rosin. It's a little bit stickier than uh, light rosin. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, then you have dark rosin. Dark rosin can be like a dark brown. You can still see through it a little bit, kind of like a tea colored, right? Or it could be green. It could be dark green, or it could be straight up black, okay? And you can't see through it at all in the dark green or the black, you know? You can, maybe you can't even see through it with the dark brown, okay? And there's reasons for this. 
The different colored rosins actually have different levels of stickiness, okay? Uh, so the lighter the rosin is, the less sticky it is. It's still sticky, but the less sticky it is, okay? Uh, the darker the rosin, the stickier it is, okay? Now, why would I want a light rosin uh, versus a dark rosin? Uh, or a medium rosin, for that matter. It's kind of the, you know, in the middle, best of both worlds type thing. Well, because the humidity in the air affects my bowing as well, okay? So if I have very, very high humidity, I actually may need less friction produced on the violin, okay? Anecdotal story from me right now. Um, I used to live in Florida, and it's very, very, Florida, USA, if you're coming in and finding me from another country in the world. Uh, it's very, it's tropical, uh, subtropical and tropical. Very hot, very humid. Uh, most of the year. Uh, wait till one day in December, you might get it down to, you know, 65 degrees. Point being is that uh, it's very humid. When I would play outside in the summer or, or well, any other time of the year, because it's warm very, very often down there, uh, high humidity, you know, um, you would, what I would find is that my, uh, even my medium rosin, would be so sticky that it would just rip bow hairs right off of my bow, okay? Now, that's what happened to me. Uh, you know, some other musicians maybe not didn't have the same experience that I did, uh, but usually what I would do is I would either really lower the amount of rosin I put on my bow, or I would go to a light rosin, because that's too much humidity. Oh, man, I don't want to lose bow hairs and be rebowing my hair all the time, right? So consideration there. Uh, I generally use the medium rosin then. So what I use the medium rosin for is because in like the, maybe the two to four months out of the year that we had lower humidity and lower temperatures, it would work fine. And medium rosin was perfect. I needed that stickiness. I need that friction production and it helped me out. Okay. Um, I never used a dark rosin. Uh, I mean, I may have gotten a little bit darker on my medium, but I never used a dark rosin because man, I would just had to rebow, rehair my bow every three months. It would have been insane. And you know, you can't keep that up. Uh, so that's something to consider there. Now, let's talk about this environmental, implica environmental implications. Sorry. Um, if you're living in Florida, you're living in a very humid, very hot place. Well, hot is secondary. But if you're living in a very humid place, I would probably stick to a light rosin or maybe a lighter colored medium rosin that you put on sparingly, okay, on your bow. Um, if you live in kind of the temperate zone, right, where it's uh, it can be warm in the summer but cool in the winter, you know, maybe we're getting down to the 40s, maybe even the 30s, you know, medium rosin's perfect there because you're likely to not have as much humidity due to that environmental uh, situation. Now, there are places where that's not true. You have a lot more humidity. Take that into account. You may need a lighter rosin, even if you you do get down to the 30s and, you know, and lower in, in the middle of the winter. So take that into account too. Um, if you're living in a place that's very cold, a lot of times they don't have a lot of humidity, okay? So you're going to want a darker rosin to get that friction you need to make, create the vibrations on your violin, on your instrument there. Okay, so the main thing is how much humidity do you have in your environment. If, it, if it's very humid, you're going to want a, a lighter rosin. If it's not humid at all, you're going to want a darker rosin. All right, so what do you do if you're traveling? I find a medium rosin is a, is, is a good, well, happy medium, right? Uh, because you can put less on, still get the same effect. You can put more on if it's very dry, okay? Now, what if you're living in the desert? It's very hot, but it's not hardly, it's not humid at all. It's very dry. Still use a medium to dark rosin, okay? Uh, yes, it's more sticky. Yes, it's hot sometimes, but you're going to need that stickiness to create that friction, okay? So keep that in mind as you're choosing your rosin. Now, there's other rosins out there that have like precious metals in them. Uh, and some people say, well, hey, you know, if I get a rosin with gold fleck in it, um, it, it helps remove the whistle, you know, that my, my violin on the high E string can make from time to time. Um, I've not personally... Not personally verified that, to be completely honest with you. Um, we can talk about high E strings or gold E strings uh, all day long, but I'm not personally verified whether or not a gold fleck um, rosin, well, can, uh, a rosin containing gold fleck actually helps that. I have had a lot of people tell me it does, but I've never played it personally, okay? At least not yet. Uh, that, that's probably going to change here uh, pretty soon. Um, but anyway, I have a lot of people and I've used a lot of other rosins that don't have the precious metals that work for me just fine. So keep that in mind. Take it with a grain of salt. Now, what it does change, uh, a lot of people tell me across the board is the tone. If you're a beginner, you may not actually hear it. So also keep that in mind as well. Um, okay. So moving on a little bit further. Uh, oh, one of the things that you also will find is that larger stringed instruments, like maybe a cello or a bass, upright bass, 
Um, a lot of times you'll see a lot of those players using darker rosins because the, the heavier gauge the string, the stickier the rosin needs to be to get the string to vibrate. Okay, So keep that in mind. So the, kind of the rule that I use is if an instrument is right next to each other in the spectrum of violin, viola, cello, upright bass, then you can probably use the same rosins on it. Um, generally speaking, there's exceptions. Okay, uh, so for example, violin and violas can use the same rosins, right? A viola and cellos can use the same rosins. Violin, viola, and cello, maybe if it's a dark rosin, okay? You can use it on a cello. Um, and you probably get by with it with a medium as well, okay? Uh, upright basses, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some people that use light rosins on their upright bass bows. Um, I have not personally seen it in orchestras, um, but that's just me. Um, it, it, hey, if you're somebody who's who's watching this and you're an upright bass player and you're saying, uh, no, I use light rosin all the time, go ahead and show me in the comments. I'd love to know, you know, because it's something that I've not been exposed to yet myself uh, being a violinist. Um, so just let me know and, and down in the comment section if you've got an opinion or, or you've got some information on that. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, so moving on. If you're a multi-instrumentalist, uh, you could probably stick with a medium rosin unless you're in a super ridiculously humid environment, uh, then you might want to take that into consideration as well. Okay, so hopefully this helps you guys. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you learned something. If you didn't learn something, that's great too. Uh, if you liked it and it helped you, uh, go ahead and hit that like button there. Remember, if you're not a subscriber, you're finding me for the first time, go ahead and, and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to receive notifications for whenever we put new content and new videos and stuff, new guides up here on the, the uh, YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that bell because uh, that's how you have to get notified as well. Um, and head on over to www.musalesson.com uh, to check out some more guides, some uh, some learning tips. Um, we've even got a violin beginners course over there and some uh, guitar uh, content as well. So check that out when you get a chance. Remember, music is magic. I'll see you guys in the next video.